Welcome back to the channel guys and today we're at another local eat. We're in the east side of Melbourne in Ringwood and we're going to visit a local Japanese shop which serves premium Japanese meals. Today it's going to be a bit more pricey but the quality is going to be high. So it's a little shop in here. It's been open since 2014. I'm surprised I haven't heard about it. So it's 10 year anniversary and we're going to give it a visit tonight. I'm going to order some of the most premium um, items there and uh, I'm feeling a little bit hungry. So hopefully there's enough room for a few dishes for you guys to enjoy as well and to see our reactions. So let's head in and um, taste some really high quality Japanese food. Let's go. Okay, we're inside Shishimi Master and we are the only ones here. It is completely dead, which is why I come really early. It opens at 4.30 in the evenings, most evenings. We're gonna order online, like most restaurants today. I'm gonna do the QR code. And let's open up the menu. So we're here to order some of the most premium items. I'm feeling like a rice bowl. So they have plenty of rice bowls here. As you can see from the menu, there's a whole assortment of goods. What I'm here for is the special foie gras on rice. And that sounds absolutely amazing. I don't know if that's a traditional Japanese meal, but it sounds absolutely luxurious. I'm also here for some eel. So we can order some conga eel tonight. And that's a different eel to what we're usually uh, getting in some Japanese sauce, which they have that sweet sauce. I think the conga eel is a little bit more on the, how should I say it? The flavor is not as intense. A bit more fishy taste, I think. And we will also get some otoro, which is this tuna belly, the fattiest part, which tastes like absolute clouds. Might order a few other things too. What I really like about Japanese restaurants is uh, their decor. And this one is no exception. It's got a lot of these really cool cartoony, kind of um, advertisements for different cafes in actual Japan, which is really cool. And they've just got a few like little ornaments, but it's a nice and clean shop. It's very simple. Yeah, every Japanese store I go to is pretty nicely decorated. So I love how every Asian restaurant or most Asian restaurants, they serve a tea. It's really good tea. It's like a barley tea. So we've ordered already and I'm uh, just waiting for it. Got four dishes. Uh, I think they're quite unique. So I'm looking forward to chowing down. Oh. Tobacco. Tomago. Another four pieces of uh, salmon bread is my boss to free the keeping you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and also the critic bone. Oh, wow. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, we just got our Toro belly, which is the fattiest part of the tuna, but the boss was kind enough to give us salmon belly as well, and then corn um, tempura. And look at that, look at the flakes on that. You can tell it's been nicely battered, and that looks crispy as, oh. And we got the tamago as well. And tamago um, in Japan was one of my favorites, so I definitely had to get that. And comes with this wasabi dipping sauce and this is my god one of the most unique dipping sauces it's not like wasabi burn your eyes out uh, intensity but it has that kind of hint of flavor in there and it is just a compliment to everything here look how beautifully presented it is all right let's dig in ikidakimasu so i'm gonna go for the salmon belly first look at that salmon belly Whoa. It's nice and fatty. So I'm gonna go in for the wasabi sauce dip. All right, here we go, one biter. Mm. Got this like crisp texture as we bite into it. Mm. It's so fatty. Oh, and that is just fresh. Talk about high quality. That is, yep, very delicious. Next. Tamago, which is just egg. Uh, I'm gonna go for a bit of uh, wasabi and then dip it into the soy sauce for this one. All right. 
Mm. Oh, just that trademark sweet flavor in that tamago and that eggy texture. Flawless, can't beat it. I think I'm gonna go for the ultimate belly, the Toro belly. Look at that. Look at that piece of tuna belly. That is a big fat piece. The most luxurious piece of fish around. Look at that. Right, I'm gonna grab it properly. I'm not gonna taint it too much. I'm just gonna do a bit of wasabi sauce and this is gonna be a two biter. There's just layers of flavor there. First, you bite into it, it's nice and fatty, it's soft, and then the layer of flavor builds up. Um, it's got that really nice umami, but slightly fishy texture and flavor. And at the end, that full fattiness just hits you, and yeah, you're in heaven, it is so good. I'm gonna have to go in for this last piece, but how I traditionally do it is I go wasabi, and then I go in for the soy sauce. All right. Oh, I wish there was more. Mm. You're almost eating two things. The first stage, almost that freshness, and then that last stage, that fattiness. Wow. And then I'm just gonna chase this. A little bit of ginger. Clear the palate. And let's get the crunch on. A tempura. Oh, just judging by the way the chopsticks are hitting the tempura, I know it's super crispy. Mmm. Oh. You can hear that crunch. And it's nice and gooey on the inside. Mmm. Perfect balance of flavors. That mayonnaise, it's got a bit of saltiness. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. Mm. That's so good. I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna go for this piece first. It's a thick boy. I'm going in for my favorite sauce again. <laughs> nice and saucy. Mm, oh. That's thick. Mm. And you find in Japan, it doesn't have that fishy aftertaste. It's like you're just chewing into this nice succulent meat of the sea. 10 out of 10. I'm gonna go in for my favorite sauce again. Now Lang did this in a, a two biter, but I'm gonna be a guts and go in for one bite. It was so funny. <laughs> I'm almost like depressed that there's no more. <laughs> but I enjoyed every moment of that one second that it lasted. Whoa. Oh, thank you. No worries. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, look at all this. This looks like an absolute art piece. We've got the conga eel with a bit of flounder, I heard. It's got a bit of flounder in there. <clears throat> this is just beautiful, the way it's laid. And we got the unique rice bowl foie gras with some French uh, mushrooms as well, I think it is. Maybe it's just normal mushrooms, but that is definitely French. Look at that, look at that piece of foie gras, wow. And then we've got the classic chicken katsu curry. And it's all like um, separated. So you can put in as much curry as you want. You can chuck the egg in there later. But wow, this looks absolutely divine. I can't wait to get my teeth into it. And we've got the complimentary miso soup. 
Oh, look at that. That looks thick. Okay, I'm going to go in for that miso soup. But look at that. It's got little bits of fish. Look at that. That's a bit of salmon there. I'm going to get in that. Oh. Mm. It's a light flavour. It's definitely not on the salty side, but it's like a cleansing of the palate. This is perfect to start off. It's just very light. I think I'm going to go in for the most unique dish I've ever had. This is the most unique rice bowl. The foie gras with mushrooms rice bowl. And they've got a little lemon on there. Just gonna sprinkle that on there. Oh, this is presented just beautifully. Look at that. And there's a um, sprinkle of some Japanese flavors that, I actually don't know what that's called, but I've seen that before. Furikake. Hope I said that right, but mm -hmm. let's dig into this rice bowl. Okay. Oh, I think there's a bit of egg in there. Oh. You know what? Anything with egg, it gets my approval. So I'm gonna just mix it up. Oh, and I love the smell of mushrooms. And this piece of fargo. Oh, look at that. That just kind of falls off. I won't break everything off. I'm just gonna mix that. Bit of egg, tomato, um, tomato <laughs> egg and mushroom. Bit of rice on there. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. That is stunning. Oh. I almost can't describe the flavor because it's like a shock to your system, like your taste buds don't know luxury until you have bitten into that. I'm gonna to have to go in for another spoon so I can describe to you guys what this flavor is. Look at that spoon. Mm. Oh. The foie gras just melts into every part of that spoon. The mushrooms, the rice, Oh, it's just very subtle. It doesn't taste like any like organ meat. It just tastes super buttery. It's, oh, all right. We've got the conga eel dish. This is my most uh, second most anticipated meal, and I'm not sure whether I should spoon it or chopstick it. Both. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm just gonna go chopstick. The f oh, look at that! Just kind of disintegrates as you touch it with the chopsticks. So I think this is the flounder. So I'm going to go in this natty. natty. It's got a bit of wasabi. Oh, that is like pure melty. I don't know how to describe that, but that's pure melty. I did not get a chance to even chew that. Wow. All right, I'm gonna try a bit of conga eel. Look at this piece. So a little bit of wasabi on there that I just uh, brushed over with, but look at that, that's a decent piece of conga eel. Mmm. Oh. That is incredible, wow. So not only is it melty, but it's got this kind of smoke flavor. The best I can describe it is one of my favorite childhood pans of food was this fried dice. And the fried dice is this really oily dried fish that you get in a can and it's usually just swimming in oil. But this is definitely not swimming in oil and it has a subtle flavor to it, just like the fried dice without the oiliness. And it is absolutely incredible. I'm gonna have to go in for a spoon, all right? So I'm gonna get a bit of wasabi, a bit of flounder, and a bit of conga eel, all in one hit. Okay, that is the perfect spoon. Oh, this is like the Shibuya crossing of flavors. There's, everything's going into there. Creamy, sweetness, little bit of umami, that's it. So many E's, but rice is such a complimentary thing to all things creamy and it just soaks it in, oh. What a rice bowl. I actually don't know which one is better. It is katsu time. 
So the things that you really need to look for is one, the flavour of the curry. Sometimes you can get really kind of bland curry with not much flavour. Two is what sort of meat you have with it. And this one we've got the katsu. I don't know if you can hear this. Oh, that's like perfectly crumbed and fried and I can tell that that's gonna have a crunch. But let's assemble. Like Lang said, it's all been kind of separated so you can put it in at your own leisure. I'm gonna pop that beautiful onsen egg in the side. Look at that. Beautifully seasoned as well. And also that delicious curry sauce. Check that out. Yum, yum, yum. Right. Mm. That's got some flavor in there. Oh, that's really nice actually. So let's just go, not completely over, so we can still get that crunch. A little bit on the egg as well. All right. And I do like Japanese restaurants when they give you enough sauce, curry sauce, so you're not just eating the rice. Sometimes I've been to places where they don't give you enough sauce. So then by the time you eat some of the rice and the katsu, the sauce is all gone and you're just eating the rice. So this is a pretty good balance so far. I'm just gonna go in for a piece of that chicken katsu. Check that out. Oh, that looks nice. Mm. Mm. Yum. Okay, so it's not too thick, not too thin. It's got that juiciness of the chicken. Not too sure what piece of chicken they've used, but you can taste a little bit of fat in there. And that crispy skin, that has just been perfectly crumbed and perfectly deep fried. Oh yeah, that's delicious. It's some naughty action. I'm gonna pop this egg. Oh my lord. Mix that in with the rice. And of course, for me to get an appropriate bite, I'm gonna put my spoon in there. Get a nice big bit of rice, egg, sauce, and that katsu on top. Well, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Wish me luck. <laughs> mm, oh. That's like a party of textures going on in my mouth. You've got this creamy, delicious egg. You've got the nice soft rice, and then you've just got that crunch of the katsu, and then the saltiness of the curry sauce brings it all together. Can't go wrong with a chicken katsu. And here we go, this is the perfect bite. Mm. Oh. That katsu is perfect. It crumbed perfectly. It's like a fattier piece. Mm. And this curry. Usually I can taste a similar flavor in all Japanese restaurants where I just get a block curry. But I think this is different. It's either a different brand or they just made it in-house, which is incredible. Wow. Mm. Everything has been 10 out of 10. Wow. Unbelievable. I've given a lot of criticism for Japanese food in Melbourne. Um, I've always uh, said that it's not up to scratch with Japan. And really, how can you expect um, to be authentic Japanese food in Japan? So I think this is as close as it gets when it comes to quality of um, ingredients. And that really elevates the flavors of each dish. Like when you come here, I recommend if you're on a budget, definitely get this katsu curry because this is by far the best katsu curry I've ever had. That chicken there, man, is that succulent. I think it's a thigh piece, which a lot of people prefer breast, but I find that a bit dry. But what blew me away, and by surprise, is this conga eel dish. That was just airy, creamy, floaty. I can only describe it as floating on cloud with your taste buds in there. And it's just 
absolutely unique. Fire gua, what can I say? It's a unique dish. Definitely try that. And I think you can add some Wagyu in there, but it's just gonna be a whole world of like oil slick. In, in the way I say it is like, you get this too much fat feeling and you can't eat anymore, but that is very fatty. Everything here is 10 out of 10. I can't fault it really. The surface is great. Um, it's quiet. Come here for some unique dishes, but if you want the classic uh, Japanese dishes such as katsu, they've got that here as well. Definitely visit. It's in the east side of Melbourne in Ringwood and it's a small little shop, so come support them. And um, that's it for today's local eat and I'll see you guys on the next video.